four principal stages of group evolution. We have forming, storming, warming, and performing. <laughs> I do think it's hilarious that they all around. <laughs> forming, uh, that's when a group first comes together during the stage. People, groups usually select group members or given group members. Um, they form a, they form a charter for the group, which is a statement of the responsibility. The, the charter is often developed externally. It's something given to the group. It's not something the group decides for themselves. And then the group develops a mission statement. And that's similar to a charter, but these are sets of goals and objectives developed within the group. And these are uh, things that the group assigns itself that they want to take down goals and objectives and stuff like that. After the forming stage, the next stage is the storming stage. And I'm sure anybody that's ever worked in a group has experienced this stage. And it's the initial stage of the group, and it's usually a stage of dysfunction. Uh, there's a lot of conflict, uh, people unsure of either what they're going to do, unsure of the leadership. Uh, this stage is actually a natural process, but the longer this stage goes on, the more likely that this stage can lead to counter uh, being counterproductive to the group. This stage, this stage can actually end up um, unraveling what the group is trying to do. After the storming stage, if you get through that, you should get into the norming stage. And during the norming stage, acceptance of the group starts to emerge and you start getting group cohesion. Uh, there is still some disagreement among the group and things are still getting worked out, but these things are usually accepted and managed and the, and the group just kind of moves ahead anyways. And during this, uh, detailed scheduling starts to emerge for the group and the group decides on how they're going to approach topics and stuff. And two of the me uh, methods they do this is a PERC chart and a Gantt chart. An example of a PERC chart is this, where it's where an organization of tasks that they want to complete, and it gives assigned timelines for when they want to complete these tasks. And it's kind of a flow chart between tasks that like, tells them in which direction they're going to be moving. And the Gantt chart is similar in that it, it's a timeline for tasks that they want to work on and boxes denote the start and stop times of the task and the bars there indicate the task timeline. And this is useful for letting the group know if they're on task, if they're on schedule, and, and where things stand. And it helps them stay focused and organized. After the uh, norming stage, groups get into the performing stage. And this is, this is the stage where all the work is done. Most of everything is done. This is um, group task work is assigned and completed. Every, uh, there's, there's finally an agreement on schedules, tasks. Uh, people finally fall behind the leadership and accept that. Diversity is, finally, is recognized in the group. It's understood that people have different opinions and people have disagreements. But this is start, this is, under this stage, this is seen as being beneficial to the group as detrimental. People learn to look at uh, people's diverse traits and accept them and see that it, it does have a positive benefit to them. Experienced professionals, people who work in groups a lot, strive to reach the stage as fast as possible. They recognize that all stages have importance, but they really try to get out of the storming stage as quick as possible, and they try to get past storming stage, and they, they want to be here, because this, this, is, this is the most 